videos that I'm uploading, you sat in front of in real life. So they can't be that long. And then don't answer that question. <laughs> All right, um, in your textbook, um, they want you to calculate. Okay, so I'm going to put down the equations and some boundaries for you. Okay. So they want you to calculate what happens when you take the area between this. This and these boundaries, this is odd, so I don't think I assigned it. I mean, you may have done it, but um, they want you to take that area and then rotate it around the x axis. So the volume around the x axis. Okay? So I'd like you to draw it. Okay? Now, by the way, um, number one, you don't have to draw it, but if you're doing a volume, you really should. Number two, we don't usually expect your drawings, particularly if you don't have to do them, if they're not stipulated, we don't usually expect them to be super accurate, okay? But I reckon, having a look at these functions and the values that you've been given, which are very nice values, okay? I reckon you could almost draw it to scale. You don't have to, of course, but it'll just make your diagram a little easier to read, honestly, okay? So give it a go, draw it up, work out the volume, and then we're going to talk about it and some special things about it in a second. A lot of you have been getting the answer, and you've been getting it right, which is, which is great, okay? But you guys know, I sort of like to see if you really know why you're right. Um, because next time when you do get such a straightforward question, it is very straightforward. The numbers are really nice. The functions are very simple, okay? When it's harder, you're going to need to be more confident, okay? Now, here's the first major criticism I have of all of you, okay? It's probably not a deal breaker, but it's the reason why most of you, when you say, I don't really know what the answer is, you can't justify whether it's one or the other. Most of you have drawn your functions, okay, and that looks all right. And then you've um, you said, okay, well, look, I want this thing to find an area. So most of you have kind of labeled that area in something like this. Uh, let's see, I'll do it like this. Okay, so there's your area. And that's where you stop and you start to compute a volume, okay? Now, to your credit, most of you have actually computed the right volume, but you're still not sure whether it is. Here's what I would encourage you to do, okay? Draw the volume, draw the volume. I'm gonna argue from my drawing in a second. If I don't have it, I can't rationalize from it, okay? So here's the way I, I recommend you do this, and you all really need to learn how to draw a volume, okay? Very important thing. Have a look at all the important points, the points that define your area, the vertices if you like, that's going to be rotated. Okay. So for me, I see three vertices. Can okay, you see them as well? You've got this point of intersection, yeah. and then you've got these two points that sort of come from this boundary. Okay. So one, two, three. Now what you do is, if you need to, get a ruler out. Because I'm rotating around the x-axis, I'm going to take those three vertices and flip them across the x-axis, because that's where they ought to end up. So for instance, if you've got good eyesight, you might just be able to see this matches here. Okay, now when I rotate around, right, that point down there, the reflected point, ought to be the on the opposite side of the circle, or the diameter, if you like, of my, my volume, okay, uh, my solid of revolution. So here's how I would draw it. There you go. You reflect it across so that you know your scale will be decent. Uh, what happens here? I'm going to do this big one, like so. Now, rather than do the other side, um, just like here, I'm going to do it dotted. Can anyone tell me why? That part of the volume is there, that part of the shape, but you can't actually see it because it's a solid, right? See, so I have the shape defined there. There it's fine. Now, I have that one last vertice, uh, pair of vertices in the vertex, pair of vertices in the middle there. I can't see them at all. So I have them drawn in like that. Okay. Now to complete out the volume, this shape ought to be mirrored here. Yeah? So I'm going to get this kind of shape. It's just gently curved. There you go. And just to help me out a little bit, I'm going to put some shading on here to make the volume more obvious. Okay. So for instance, you can put in things like this. Okay. So you can see that what you're looking at inside there, that cylindrical shape, right? What's going to happen is it bends in toward, I missed, toward this hole, right? So it's not this hole just going straight down. 
it actually sort of curves inward, and it's smaller here than it is over there. Okay. If you wanted, you could put a few more lines in, sort of like uh, which way? This way. But after that, you start to put more lines in, it becomes more obscure rather than less. So there's my volume. Okay. Now, how do I work out? How do I evaluate what the volume is? Okay. Just think about it. Without this weird, awkward, hollow bit. Okay, so forget the, the, the idea that it's hollow for a second. If I were to work out that volume, what integral would I form? Let's just start with the formula first. Without any specific functions in it, what do I start with? Very first thing, pi. Why is there a pi there? Because it's circular. Right? As you'll see in a second if you can't remember, this is just comes from pi r squared. Right? What do I have in here? I have my upper and lower bounds. And then I've got, now, is it x squared dy or is it y squared dx? Y squared. Now, how can you tell? The way I always think about it is, which way you're rotating, that's your with respect to x. You're rotating with respect to x, if that makes sense. So there's your x and the other one must be, yeah. So there's your pi r squared. Okay, let's evaluate it here. So you have pi 1 to 4 of, now, remember I just said imagine if it was solid without that weird hole in the middle. So what would you define as y? It's the outside, isn't it? That's what's going to give you the big solid. Okay. So it's square root of x squared, so you're just going to get x dx. Okay. And we can evaluate that. Yeah. All right, now, if I want to get rid of this volume in the middle, all I need to do is calculate that volume and subtract. Yes? So, in fact, I should really have up here, right, the subtraction of another whole volume. Okay. So it should look like this, right, a to b. It'd be the other function, I guess I'll call it y2 squared dx. Okay. So in this case, 1 to 4, what's y squared going to be? It's just 1 over x, uh, which, by the way, is the sole reason why it appears in this exercise. Okay with respect to x. So far so good? Yep. Okay, great. Now because you've got that same constant coefficient out the front of both, you have the same upper and upper and lower boundaries for both, you can combine these two integrals. Yeah. So you can say pi 1 to 4 x minus 1 over x all with respect to x. And then off we go. Okay, let's quickly compute it. What's the primitive? <laughs> Half x squared Minus log x between 1 and 4. What's going to happen? Um, let's see. Half of 4 squared is 8 minus log 4. Yeah? Minus lower boundary. Half of 1 squared is a half minus log of 1, which is 0. So you ought to get 7.5. I suppose you can call that 2 log 2. You don't, you don't gain all that much. It doesn't factorize out. I'm just going to leave it. Okay. It's a volume. So I suppose I ought to say it's units.